with Brother Howard Hunnicutt. The scripture in 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. In these days when people are being tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, believers need to know the word of God that they may earnestly contend for the faith. Therefore, this broadcast is dedicated to helping you, the Christian listener, to rightly divide the word. And now, Brother Howard Unikin. Good morning, brethren. This is Brother Howard Unikin. I welcome you again for another broadcast of Rightly Dividing the Word. The day before we get in the Word, I'd like to thank each and every one of you that faithfully, financially support the broadcast. It's been a real ministry. There have been times of testing and trials, and I thank God for those who are faithful and responsible to the work of the Lord. Amen. This is the week that we celebrate as the Passion Week of our Christ, our Lord, our King, and our God. The week in which took place the, the Passover feast that he took the night of the Passover, representing the symbol of the Passover, where he was held as Messiah coming in through the gates of the city of Jerusalem, riding on the foal of an ass, riding in humility, and then eventually his crucifixion for the sin of the world, that he might purchase all things back to God the Father, which were lost even from the beginning of time. From the beginning when man was created upon this earth to do right in God's sight and failed, there was the need for the serpent bruiser to come forth and crush the head of Satan, the enemy of all mankind, which was the seed of the woman, the virgin-born Son, Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. Hallelujah. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the Word of God. And I just pray, Father, that people will receive the Word of the living God in their hearts and learn instruction and learn truth, Lord, in the way of righteousness. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. I want to remind you also that Every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, we have Bible study in my home. You're certainly welcome to come. The number to call me at home is 571-8806. That's 571-8806 in Raleigh. And it's 7 o'clock Tuesday nights. And it's real good. Amen. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, and upon the colt of the foal of an ass. Friends, this prophecy in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, was of the Messiah, the prince, who was sent of God into this world to be ruler over the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven on earth is an earthly kingdom. It is not a spiritual kingdom. However, you have to be spiritual to rule in this kingdom. Come on. That's what it meant. You must be born of water and of the Spirit. The nation of Israel was birthed by water as a nation when they were led through the Red Sea by Moses. And every Jew held on to his inheritance and to his right into the kingdom by being a descendant of those that came through the Red Sea. But Jesus said unto Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, unless you're born of water and of the Spirit. Over 12 times in the Old Testament, it was said that when the king should come and restore the kingdom of Israel on earth, that he would pour out his Spirit on the house of David. He would pour out his Spirit upon the inhabitants of Israel. Come on, he said he would pour out in Joel his Spirit upon all flesh. All flesh don't have the Spirit now, but in the kingdom they will. Blessed be the name of the Lord. <laughs> Come on. Pentecost was not a fulfillment of Joel's prophecy. It was, just, uh, it was just an example of what was present at Pentecost, not the fullness of that which is to come in the kingdom age. Come on. People misinterpret that, miss the whole prophecies of the Bible. Amen. Jesus didn't just die on a cross to purchase us back to God spiritually, 
but he died upon that cross to purchase the kingdom of heaven back to God, which was lost in the garden. Man had two kingdoms. He had the kingdom of God, which was God's rulership over man's heart life, and he had the kingdom of heaven, where man was supposed to rule over planet Earth. Now, in this dispensation of time, we're in the kingdom of God, where God sits upon the throne of every saint's heart and rules and reigns in them in righteousness and peace and love and joy in the Holy Ghost. But, friends, there is coming the kingdom of heaven on earth, where Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, Son of David, who has the key of David in his hand, shall rule and reign over all the nations of the earth, and shall judge all nations, and shall make war with those that make war with the Lamb, those that make war with the remnant of the seed of the Israelite people that are left in this world. May I go to say this, that God preserved one race of people on earth to be his time piece of prophecy. And that is the Hebrew race of people. God in Jeremiah chapter 31 said, A new covenant will I make with the house of Israel, not as I made with her fathers when I took them by the hand out of the land of Egypt, which covenant they break. And I was a father unto them. But I will write my law upon their hearts. No longer will they need the laws established on tablets of stone. No longer will they need Moses to come down from the Mount of Sinai to give them the 613 commands of Torah. No, they will receive the law of God in their hearts and as a result have the Spirit of God upon them to be obedient in the kingdom of heaven which was given to them as a land inheritance, a land for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Come on known as Canaan land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Huh, I like that. You can't have milk without cattle or goats, and you can't have cattle or goats without fertile vegetation upon the fields. That means when you go into the land of called the kingdom of heaven on earth, it would be like the Garden of Eden. That's what man lost. He lost his divine nature and became ashamed of his nakedness, and hid himself in fig leaves from the Lord our God. And God said, Adam, where are you? He said, I'm hiding, Lord. I'm naked and am ashamed. He said, who told you that you were naked? Where did you get this knowledge? See, they had taken of the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. The fruit of the knowledge of tree of good and evil. Man was never intended to have this knowledge. All man did with that knowledge become evil and corrupt. Uh, he devised weapons of warfare, weapons of destruction. When God created man to till the ground, and instead of, and one day, hear me friends, according to the Holy Scriptures and prophecy, one day God's going to turn that around because they're going to beat their swords into plowshares, and they're going to beat their spears into pruning hooks. Blessed be the name of the Lord. They won't be acting like as Cain seed, who are tissifers of brass and iron, and instead of making things to till the ground like they ought to do, made weapons of warfare, so even that Cain rose up and killed his brother. Come on, Cain should have been busy out uh, tilling the ground instead of killing the brother. He made a weapon of warfare instead of fashioning his knowledge that God had given him to put that old pruning hook to the ground, that old plowshare to the ground. Amen? And that's what man's been doing ever since. He's become a murderer of his brothers. He's become murderous and wicked in his heart. Because man has gone astray from God, who is ruler over heavens and the earth. Now Satan told God that he would extol himself above the Most High God, and he would build a kingdom on the sides of the north. The sides of the north are known as Zion. It is known as the place where God has redeemed all things through his Son back to himself, that is the city of David. That is the city of the great king, where Jerusalem, where the kings reign. Come on. That's where redemption took place. Quite possibly where man's salvation was first lost. That can be debated. But redemption takes place in Zion. The devil knew it and said, I will set my throne above Zion. Your whole plan of redemption for man, God will fail. Because I, Satan, am going to rule through all mankind on earth. That's Satan's big deal. And the way it looks now, <laughs> God may be losing the battle. But let me tell you something. God has never lied to man. And he's never lied in prophecy. 
And God said that the King of kings and the Lord of lords shall come. He came the first time and was rejected of his own people, the nation of Israel. And Paul the Apostle said in the Roman letter that this is the blindness of Israel in part. Didn't say every Jew be blinded to their Messiah. They've got Jews for Jesus on the west coast in California. They've got Jews that have come to Christ by the multitudes of thousands and quite possibly millions. But Israel as a whole, as a nation, was blinded in part that the fullness of the Gentiles might come in. This has double reference. It has reference to the Gentiles being allowed to be grafted into the gospel of Jesus Christ and find salvation. But it's also talking about the times when the Gentiles shall rule over planet Earth. But friends, there's coming a day where the Jews are going to rule over planet Earth with their Messiah. And all families of the Earth shall come up and worship the Lord of hosts at Jerusalem. Zechariah chapter 14. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And in the book of Revelation, Jesus is coming back on them that make war with the Lamb. See, if you make war with God's people, you're making war with God. And if you make war with the people on earth who are chosen of God, which are the Jewish nation, you're making war with God. Jesus came unto his own, and his own received him not. But to as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. That's the kingdom of God ruling in our hearts. But the kingdom of heaven, and these are parabolic teachings that you'll find all through the New Testament in the narrative writers Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, especially in the book of St. Matthew, because Matthew is predominantly known as a writer to the Jewish nation concerning the life of Christ. And he always gives the figment the, the he always gives the allurement to the fact of the kingdom of heaven. Two thousand years ago, if I was a man named John the Baptist and I came out of the wilderness were eating locusts and wild honey, that's beautiful. The locust represents God's wrath upon earth, and the honey represents God's provision of a fertile land, like the land of Canaan. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> he came out of the wilderness preaching God's mercy and God's judgment. And he came out offering the kingdom. He went on before the Messiah who was to come after him. And he says, there cometh one after me who is mightier than I, who shoe latch it. I am not worthy to stoop down and unloosen. And he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire whose fan is in his hand, he will thoroughly purge his floor. He'll gather all the wheat into the garner, and he'll burn up chaff with unquenchable fire. It's God sanctifying your unholy heart. Come on. God doesn't need water baptism to sanctify you. He uses the fire of the Holy Spirit upon your heart. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be his holy name. And in the book of Malachi, in chapter 3 and chapter 4, it says that when Messiah comes, he will sit as a refiner's fire, and he shall purify the heart life of the sons of Levi. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Come on. God's going to purify that old chaff heart of yours with the fire of Almighty God off the altar of God. Just as the seraphim in Isaiah chapter 6 took tongues and flew down and sanctified the lips of a repentant man of unclean lips named Isaiah. And it was only after that that Isaiah was called of God into the service of God because after that the Lord said, Who will go for me? Whom shall I send? And after this man had been sanctified in his lips, he said, Here am I, Lord. Send me. That's what God wants to do with you. God ever sanctify some of your unholy hearts out there? You'll be prepared for the master's service. You'll be a vessel sanctified unto honor. Meet for the master's use. God will be able to use you like none other. He'll teach you his word. You won't need to go down here to Mr. So-and-so and get his interpretation. You won't need to read Brother So-and-so's book. You'll read that Holy Bible, and the Word of the living God will come into your soul. Come on. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds forth from the mouth of God. Not from men, from God. And God wants to feed you on a daily basis. He wants to treat you as His child and raise you up. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And that's the kingdom of God right now. That's where we live. 
The kingdom of God on earth right now does not have the kingdom of heaven restored on earth. Hear the words of Jesus in this prayer that he taught his disciples in the nation of Israel under the Jewish covenant. Jesus living under law, preaching the law of Moses before the grace covenant came. He said, pray in this manner. He didn't say, pray this prayer. Come on. He just got through rebuking people for being repetitive in their prayer life, thinking they'll be heard for their much speaking. Called them hypocrites that pray like that. But he said, after this manner pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. The Jews were looking for the kingdom to come. All through the prophecies of the Old Testament, it talked about the glory of a king that would reign in Isaiah chapter 32. In Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 5 through 7, And I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign. Oh, the king is coming in glory, and he's called the king of kings and the lord of lords. For there has never been a king upon this earth or a lord upon this earth that's going to rule with Jehovah his heart over this earth like Jesus will. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be his holy name. The Lamb of God is indeed coming to the world to take away the sin of the world and to restore all things back to God. Yet we see not all things subdued under his feet, the Bible says. Paul recognized that even though Jesus is ruling and reigning from the right hand of his Father, all things are not complete, all things are not subdued completely under his feet, but will be in the time of the kingdom. And in the time of the kingdom, this Michael, the archangel, shall descend and chain up Satan. Thank God, thank God, thank God! He's going to chain up Satan for a thousand years. He's going to put him into the bottomless pit. And Satan will not be able to deceive the nations anymore till the end of the thousand year reign of the Messiah over planet earth where all men come up and worship God in holiness and purity of heart. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let me tell you something, friends. Satan's deception of the nations. The nations are known as the Gentile peoples on earth. God chose one race of people, the Semitic race, the Jewish race of people, to reveal the truth of God's holiness, to reveal who God was and the love of his heart. Not this God of a symbol of wind or rain or fire or water, not the gods of stone or the gods that they carved considering man or four-footed beasts, but the God of all his creation, the Jews were to testify to this whole world who this one God was. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God chose this race of people, and Satan's been out to kill this race of people from earth, because if he could possibly destroy the whole Hebrew race, come on, that's what anti-Semitism is about, if he could destroy the whole Hebrew race, Satan could look in the face of God and said, I won. Now I rule your planet, and I have set myself on Zion, the sides of the north. Come on. Satan's going to try and rule from Jerusalem. The Bible says half the city shall be taken when the Antichrist comes. The Bible says Satan himself shall enter into the person of the Antichrist in the last three and a half years. Come on. <laughs> the father of lies is going to enter into one of his liars on earth, and he's going to try and rule through man. This whole planet that God made for himself and for his own glory. Friends, this is what the whole Bible's about now. Hear me. God redeeming man according to his own counsel, his foreknowledge, his predestined will and purpose through whom and how he chose to do it. Anyone, any, hear this caution. Any preacher that preaches to you that there will not be a kingdom on earth is calling God a liar and that man is you are to put a mark on that man because he doesn't preach the truth of God's Word. He is a liar before God. He's anti-Semitic in heart, and I wouldn't trust him. Not with my wife, my family, my billfold, my car, nothing that I have. I wouldn't have anything to do with him because he has the mark of the beast on him. He identifies himself with the devil who is out to deceive the nations to say that God has washed up the nation of Israel. Now, I quote to you from, Genesis, from Jeremiah chapter 31 that God said that if you could divide, if some of you would have looked out last night, you may not have been up that late. We had a 
almost a total lunar eclipse. I saw the comet the next morning, this morning, that big hellbop comet falling out. And the Bible says this about all that, that if you could cause the stars not to operate in their course, if you could cause the sun to cease from shining and the moon to, to not go in her course, Jeremiah 31, then you could remove God's covenant of the Hebrew race on earth. But until you can do that, friends, you cannot remove the Hebrew nation from earth. Hitler tried it. Come on, the czars of Russia tried it. They made up a false doctrine against the Jews called the Protocols of Zionism. I don't have time to explain that. But the Rothschilds, some of the richest Jews in the world, came up and said, well, we weren't invited to such a meeting to write such a doctrine, so it wasn't written of Jewish people that we know of. But it was a it was an anti-Gentile doctrine written by Gentiles to have reason to try and destroy the Jews. Now hear me, friends. The only reason that people really want to destroy the Jews or mock them or ridicule them or put them down is because Satan's in your heart. Hear me now. The deception of Satan to the nations, the Gentile people on earth, is to turn everybody against the Jew so that they try and kill them off as a race of people so Satan can stand before the God of the earth and say, I won. But I tell you, it's already written in the end of the book who's going to win. Woohoo! Glory! Glory to God! He has put his word above his very name, and he is not a God that he should lie. God is coming back. And I read to you from the beginning of the text how it read in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto me, unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon the foal of an ass. He has salvation. The name of Jesus is God's salvation. It, the Greek word Jesus comes from the word Yeshua in the Hebrew, Yahshua, God's salvation. Jesus shall save his people from their sins. And here, the commandment of God through the prophet of God, Zechariah, is rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee riding upon a donkey. Now hear me, friends. That's how Jesus came in to the gates of Jerusalem. He came riding upon the foal of an ass in humility. But he came, held as king, didn't he? And then when they said, rebuke these people from hollering out, rebuke your disciples, Jesus said, listen here. If I was to rebuke them, the rocks from the ground would cry out. Why? Because God does not lie in prophecy. And the prophecy was that when the king of Israel would come, all Zion would rejoice greatly and shout, that's what they did on that day that we celebrate called Palm Sunday. Isn't that beautiful? God is not missed in prophecy. God loves your soul so much this day that Jesus not only hung on a cross for the Jewish nation, but for every person who would come to him by faith, believing that he is God's salvation of the earth. This is not just a form of doctrine. This is a person. Jesus Christ, God manifest in flesh, God's salvation to us. And it is up to us to freely receive the free gift of God, Jesus, the sacrifice, the lamb sacrifice that took away the sin of the world. He's going to restore all things back to God the Father, friends. He's going to restore all things in righteousness. And the King is coming. Yes, the King is coming for me. And when He comes back, He's going to rule and reign over this earth in righteousness. Oh, they talked about the Pax Romana, the peace of Rome. They talked about the golden age of Greece. All these were short-lived and lived in wickedness. But I tell you, there's going to be a time of peace over all Israel where it says in Isaiah chapter 32, after the king shall reign in verse 1 and about verse 12, it says he will pour out his spirit upon the nation of Israel. And then finally in verse 18, he says, My people shall dwell in peaceable habitations and in quiet resting places. And the true context of that verse is, friends, Israel has never had peace in this earth. She never will have complete peace 
until the Lord of glory comes back to rule and reign over her in righteousness, and every Jew is going to have safety. The Bible says in Jeremiah 23, 5 and 7, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, a king shall reign, and Judah shall dwell safely. Safely. Even Paul in his day said, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. The Bible says when the king comes back, he said that the, late, the nations shall learn war no more. Matthew chapter 25, Jesus talked about the sheep and the goat nations being divided. When the Messiah comes back, all his angels with him, all the saints with him, and he comes to rule over planet earth, he's going to bring all those nations that either helped or hurt those Hebrew people. He's going to bring them before him, all that are existent after the battle of Armageddon and after the great war where the Lamb of God comes upon the earth in wrath. Come on. After that, he's going to divide the sheep and the goat nations. And he's going to say to the sheep nations that helped Israel in that day, Come ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and in prison and you visited me. I was thirsty and you gave me to drink. When saw we do this way, Lord? He says, as much as you've done it to the least of these, my brethren, the Israelite nation, you did it unto me. And he's going to say to those goat nations that were against Jehovah, that were against God, that did not feed, that did not visit, that did not help the sick or in prison, he's going to say, depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. The devil's going to hell because he tried to come against God's plan and come against God's redemption for man all through the ages. And all those that bear the mark of the devil in their foreheads and in their heart life and in their hands of strength, they're going to perish with the devil in the eternal lake of fire and brimstone. I pray that God would have spoke something to your heart this morning according to this word. I love you in Jesus. This is Brother Howard. Please don't forget the Bible study on Tuesday night. I'm sure you'll be blessed as you were today. <laughs> Bible study, 7 o'clock in my home. And you are certainly welcome. And uh, we just pray that the word of the Lord will go forth in your heart today. Father, bless every soul today. Let them receive the word of salvation. Let people who don't know Christ bow their knee humbly today and ask Jesus into their heart to be Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, this is Brother Howard. I love you in Jesus. Till tomorrow. God bless. Be rightly dividing the word with Brother Howard Unikin. This broadcast is able to stay on WFTK through the faithful contributions of the listening audience. If this broadcast ministers to your heart and you would like to continue hearing Brother Howard Unikin here on WFTK, please take the time to contact him today. You can contact Brother Howard Unikin by writing him and sending your prayer requests and love gifts. And encourage him today and tell him you enjoy the broadcast on your ministry station, WFTK.